and now the latest across the wide world of tropics. Tropic Weather Bulletin for October the 25th. Well, this evening we have two active tropical cyclones. The most pressing concern out of both of them is Hurricane Rick, which has gotten its core well developed now on approach to Mexico. We also have Tropical Storm 25W, according to the JTWC, out in the open western Pacific, could become a typhoon over the next few days. It's day 297 of 2021. 25W makes 83 storms out of this year, getting close to the average mark as we near day 300. Let's get to the North Atlantic where we see a new area of interest on day 146 of hurricane season. The National Hurricane Center is monitoring a potential subtropical system forming from a non-tropical low that's going to be coming off the United States in a couple of days. But we'll have to see if this one uh, develops 30% at this time. Let's hope that it doesn't do that. I, I would be perfectly fine if it doesn't become a subtropical cyclone if I'm being completely honest. On day 162 of hurricane season, the only thing active here is Hurricane Rick, which, as I mentioned, has got its act together and is now strengthening a bit on approach to landfall. We're expecting landfall within the next 12 hours, uh, 12 to 24 hours now, uh, along the coast of Mexico, so we're again fairly close to the end of Rick. In the Western Pacific, on uh, there is no days in the Western Pacific season. This is a worldwide season. Uh, the Tropical Storm uh, 25W is sitting in the open western Pacific. That one could become a typhoon as it heads generally out to sea. Not expecting this to track towards the Philippines uh, or China or Taiwan. We do also have 99W in the South China Sea. 40% on this one as it tracks towards Vietnam. Uh, only reason, well, one of, the, one of the main reasons that I didn't go higher uh, than 40% is the models have started to back off on its intensity, mainly because it's running out of time. Fairly soon, it's going to be uh, finding itself in Vietnam. We can see in the North Indian Ocean, it's fairly quiet right now. Uh, models were depicting the potential for a sub, uh, non subtropical, a tropical cyclone to form in the Bay of Bengal. Uh, however, the guidance is too little to mark an AOI at this time, but we'll need to monitor that just for the small potential that one does form. And in the Southwest Indian Ocean, we have talked about it for a bit. Uh, we, are, we are now marking a new AOI in the Southwest Indian Ocean, 20% at this time. Most development looks to be taking place after day five, but models are depicting it could see some formation uh, prior to the day five point. Getting to the satellite imagery, we can see uh, the Atlantic Basin is fairly quiet right now. Uh, especially where a potential subtropical cyclone would be. We can see a large frontal system that looks like draped across the uh, central Atlantic. If you look towards the United States, you can see a low pressure system there bringing uh, flooding and severe weather to portions of the mid-Mississippi Valley. If we go into the eastern Pacific, you can see tiny hurricane Rick compared to that extratropical cyclone. Uh, they're uh, really blowing up some good convection there as it approaches Mexico. That extra tropical cyclone, by the way, bringing significant rainfall to California, could uh, set records for the pressure within that region. In the Western Pacific, Tropical Storm 25W is looking pretty good right now. The convection is really not uh, con condensed around the center, it would seem, on this satellite loop. Uh, so it will have to get that con more condensed around the center if it really wants to intensify significantly. And you can see the disorganized nature of 99W. Regardless of development, Vietnam, uh, you'll likely feel some heavy rainfall from 99W. Getting to the northern Indian Ocean, we can see some general thunderstorm activity here. Nothing really signifying tropical cyclone activity. If we move to the southern part of the Indian Ocean, we can see some thunderstorm activity blowing up along and south of the equatorial region. This may be the beginning of potentially our tropical cyclone uh, taking shape. We'll see if it forms. Again, we are now a week out from the southern hemisphere season's beginning. Getting a closer look right into Rick, you can see on the latest loop, right at the end there, a little bit of an eye trying to pop out. Unfortunately, right as it's about to make landfall, it's very unfortunate. If you're within the uh, path of Rick, make sure to be in shelter at this point because you're about to brace for a hurricane. High end category one at this time. National Hurricane Center has it at 90 miles per hour, as you can see here in their latest forecast. Bringing it in again uh, within the next 12 to 24 hours, uh, Monday afternoon being inland, it looks like there, and then being gone by Tuesday. Getting to the sea surface temperatures for Rick for the remainder of its time over water, it's very warm. 
I could see perhaps the topography of Mexico being a bit of an inhibitant for its, its strengthening trend, but we'll have to see how that plays out. In the North Atlantic, in the Caribbean, it's very warm, very piping hot. Where our potential subtropical cyclone would be, uh, it's looking pretty favorable for the subtropical cyclone Genesis. If we look towards the Indian Ocean, where uh, some models were depicting potential northern Indian Ocean development, it's fairly warm, generally 28 degrees Celsius. Uh, same case with the Southwest Indian Ocean AOI. As it heads further southwest, it goes uh, cooler in the sea surface temperatures, but favorable enough for tropical cyclone formation. In the Western Pacific, it's fairly warm for 99W and 25W, uh, generally 29, 28, 29 degrees Celsius. And in the Australian region and South Pacific, we are generally looking at very warm sea surface temperatures. They're ready for the cyclone seasons. Speaking of the uh, sea surface temperature, here's the anomalies. You can see the South Pacific, Australian region, and South Indian Ocean, where the tropical cyclones typically form. It's generally above average. We do have some pockets of near to below average within the central Southwest Indian Ocean. The, northwest, the, the northern Indian Ocean is generally above average there, with the exception of portions of the Arabian Sea. The Western Pacific is generally above average. The Central Pacific is generally below average with that La Nina pattern near the equatorial region. And the Eastern Pacific is generally above average in the Atlantic. Then nobody's surprise is still generally above average. Getting to the on this day section, we only got one storm active on this day. Hurricane Rena would peak on this day as a category three in 2011. This storm was a very interesting storm. Uh, we had a jet interaction, I believe, with this storm, which uh, helped it intensify to a Category 3. But as the jet weakened, so did Arena. It's an interesting uh, scenario to play out in the Caribbean, especially in October, to see uh, a jet help a storm strengthen and help a storm weaken, thankfully rapidly weakening on approach to the Yucatan Peninsula. Again, this on this day section is provided by Cyclone History. Uh, I recommend you follow that page on Twitter as every day there are new and exciting at some times uh, Cyclone history uh, news to look at. I find it very interesting, especially with the much bigger storms that I didn't even know that existed. Getting to the naming list, the Atlantic Basin may be showing signs of activity now that we're getting towards November. Let's hope it stays quiet, but we can never roll out another storm or two before the season ends. Of course, we've all got over a month still. The next two names here are Wanda and Adria. In the Eastern Pacific, after Rick, the next two names are Sandra and Terry. In the Central Pacific, the next name here is Hone, followed by Iona. I don't know when we'll see Iona. Maybe we'll have to wait another two years, like we've had to wait two years, o over two years now, for Hone. In the Western Pacific, we might be about to get a new name if the JMA decides to name it. The next two names are Malu, followed by Nayatal. After Nayatal, it's Rai. After that, if we do get Malu tonight. In the North Indian Ocean, uh, the next two names are Jawad, followed by Asanai. And moving to the Southern Hemisphere, reminder, once again, we're about a week away now from the cyclone season's beginning. It's getting towards that time of year. In the Australian region, we're looking out for Paddy, followed by Ruby. In the Southwest Indian Ocean, we're looking out for Anna, followed by Batsarai. And in the South Pacific, we're waiting for Cody, followed by Dovi. Thank you so much for watching this Tropical Weather Bulletin, and we'll see you tomorrow night for another Tropical Weather Bulletin.